I know we've been on a little bit of a stud welding kick lately, but I have a method that I've been wanting to try for a while. Finally got a customer willing to let me do it. Let's jump into this process, which leaves us with a sign with no visible fasteners, but still stud mounted on a blind install. We don't have access to the back of that wall. Let's go. Alrighty y'all, rather than running through the plasma cutting, which you've seen before, I figured I'd take some time and go through the design here. What we have is a stencil that we're gonna cut out, and that stencil is the insides of these letters. We've offset the edges in about a quarter inch. That's gonna be our stencil, and then we've added these holes. We'll get to those in a minute. They're gonna be used for the studs that hold everything in place, and then one of them is just an alignment hole. The whole idea here is cut the pieces out and we'll laminate a backer that attaches to the wall to the faces. Here's the faces. In total we're using about three quarters of a sheet of 14 gauge. Making the stencil uses more material but I find it worth it when it comes to install. Yeah I was about to say, um, move yourself twice. over maybe a board. Yeah. Yeah that's perfect. Now, to show you how this goes together, I'm gonna jump forward a little bit in the explanation here, or the assembly. The idea is we've got a backer piece that some studs are gonna mount to. That gets attached to the wall. There's a bunch of ways to do this. In this case, we're mounting to a thin wood paneling wall. So we can't do something like I did in last week's video where we glue a stud into place. I just don't want to rely on that for the mechanical connection there. A screw is going to work much better. And in this case, it's a blind install. We don't have access to the back of that panel without doing a bunch of drywall work. And I don't want to do that. The studs were a idea I had and I reached out to a buddy of mine, David, from the channel Made by Laurent. You guys should definitely check him out. He does some awesome forge work. He's got a lathe and he made some of these for me to test out this idea. I love the way they came out. Really appreciate David coming through here, helping me get an idea down into, you know, a physical product that I could actually try out. It worked beautifully. Let me know down in the comments if this is something that you guys are interested in after the video. If there's interest, I'm gonna look into having these mass produced so I could get the cost of these studs down pretty low. Um, if there's interest, you know, it makes sense to order a larger quantity and that's the right way to do it to save money. So I hope that was enough explanation of the idea I'm going with. Uh, let's jump into the build. I've got my friend Mary here helping out in the shop and you'll see how it's done. So Mary found it easier to use the magnetic third finger there to hold the pieces down into place. Uh, I personally find it easier to do just with my finger, but you know, that's why you have tools to help you out in different situations. As far as the welding, because the walls of the stud pieces are only a sixteenth of an inch thick, that's basically 16 gauge. So we've got the HTP Pro Pulse 200 set up for 16 gauge, just using the stock settings. and. We're going to be doing our tacks basically by starting on the face of the backer and then washing up onto the stud piece so that you can get that tack to kind of burn right into the backer piece and then get a nice connection to the stud. Last thing we want, of course, is one of these tacks just breaking off. Now it's just a bunch of welding. There were nine pieces total, so 27 studs. What do you need? I'm gonna do a plug for my buddy Jimbo who makes yeah. these things by himself in Where's the shop. Where's that mobile gun sleeve? Gun sleeve, yeah. Right there. Get yourself one, jimbosgarage.com. Ah, thank you Jimbo. Thank you Jimbo.
Way, way to put your glove hand right in front of the camera every time, Mary. Oh, did you want the action? <laughs> As Mary sits here and works her way through the rest of the pieces, I'm over in the background. You see me running back and forth. We're burning up all of our scrap steel, parcel sheets, whatever, as an effort to get the shop a little bit more clean, making some of our Weld It Yourself kits. We've got rocket stoves. Right now we're cutting out a hexagonal fire pit. We'll even move on to globes and roses. Those, again, are always over at WeldItYourselfKits.com. Appreciate y'all checking that out. It's a great way to support the shop, get a cool project. My hope is that if you guys get one of these, you bring somebody who doesn't know how to weld or hasn't welded much into the shop, get them learning, teach them. I think it's a really fun project to do, especially you know with kids. The roses make a great birthday gift for mom or whoever. With all the welding done, we're gonna go over the pieces. I'm just showing you how those studs sit in there. Hopefully you can see the little cup that's left behind will hold the head of a screw. Last thing to do with them as far as these backer pieces is just go over them with a flap disc lightly, get any BBs off, you know, clean anything up that's going to be real obnoxious. These are not going to be seen because we're laminating the front face onto them, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't at least clean them up because the last thing that we want is for a BB on the backers to get in there and mess up the lamination of the faces onto the backer. We're using the extra or fourth hole in all of the backers with the backer laying face down, upside down on the face plates to mark where a stud is gonna go. We're using a stud because this is gonna go for powder coating and the powder coater needs a way to hang these face plates. You could of course just tack a wire on there but I've got the TrueWeld StudWelding.com TWI321, and we're gonna run through the first thing that you have to do every time you have someone new using the stud welding. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. And it's stud bend for the welding. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, so this is a little spring loaded. You feel this? Like it. Once there's a stud in there, see this is spring loaded? Yes. And so you, you just push it down flat and you literally just pop the trigger. First stud build ever on a production farm. Right? That's rad. It does its thing. Yeah. It's so nice <laughs> when things do their thing. <laughs> So I figured I'd just let most of that run out in real time so you guys can see, you know, a stud welder is just a time saver is really what it's about. A nice side benefit is that on 14 gauge and above, there's no mark or scar or heat distortion on the face of the plate. So that's a nice benefit not to have to do any finish work there. With all the other parts cleaned up, any little burrs, you know, ground off, anything that, you know, it's gonna be messed up after powder coating, cleaned up. These go to the powder coater, and then we will be ready for install. Thank yeah, I was about to say, um, move yourself fly. over, maybe a board. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Installation is pretty simple here, guys. We're going to take our stencils, hold them up on the wall, and then take our backer pieces, and I'm just lightly setting the screws into the wall. I'm not driving them home, basically just to make a mark in the wall. Of course, you could also do this with like a Sharpie or something that would fit down through that little hole in the studs. Now, because the backer pieces are actually the drops from making this stencil, 
or I guess the stencil is the drop from making the backer pieces, we can't pull the stencil off over the backer pieces, and it's it's not a great idea to do anyway, and that's why we're marking the holes, then we'll take the stencil off the wall, put it back, or put it to the side, put the backer pieces back on, and drive the screws home fully. We run around, do that to all the pieces one at a time, also letting the customer determine the alignment between the top and bottom part. We had our theoretical alignment, but people's tastes always change, and uh, we were off a couple inches from where the original design said we were going to put this, and that's fine. doesn't affect what I'm doing at all, and the customer's happy. After getting all the backer pieces secured, we're going to run around and stick VHB tape everywhere. We're using a lot more tape than we need. I like to go a little overkill. The stuff isn't that expensive. I've got a link down in the description for it. It's great to use. I've got it in a bunch of different thicknesses and you see here there's a couple different colors and that's just uh, one of the widths. The inch wide tape is gray and the half inch wide tape is black for whatever reason. After getting all the tape backers peeled off the sign faces are going to go on. The final showpiece and the stud that was used to hold them during powder coating goes through the extra hole in the backer. This stops us from needing to remove that stud some way. You know, it's just the easy out on dealing with this, and those studs are so small you don't see them, they're not in the way. You could, of course, get studs that break off. They make special ones for that, but it's overkill, it's not necessary, and if one of them broke during powder coating, we'd be you know there'd be some problems that need addressing with all of the pieces in place you've got a little bit of play with VHB tape you can real lightly stick the part on and if it's not perfect you can back it off readjust it but once you press it home you're gonna have a hard time getting it off without messing the tape up and having to redo everything once that VHB has set for a couple days it's locked in and this stuff is a serious bond Final check over all the parts just to make sure they look good, make sure I'm happy with them, nothing's loose, and we're ready to get the final approval from the customer. So there you go guys, I think it turned out great. If you want to see a little bit more, go ahead and hit subscribe, of course, there's always Patreon. Like these great folks, this customer is actually a patron, so even better, they get discounts too. And um, yeah, until next time, thanks for stopping by. <laughs>